Okay, the next part we're going to be creating is part number 4.8, which is found on page 108 in your book, which is chapter four. And we're gonna be creating this bearing holder, this bearing holder. So, um, so if we look to the book or the information, again, it's, it's found on the bottom half of page 108, and the bearing holder here, we're going to start by creating the boss on the outside. Then we're going to create the ears, then the through hole, the two holes in the base, and then the hole coming through the wall here. After that, we're gonna be adding some chamfers to the very front and the back of the diameter of 1.625 um, through hole. And then we're also gonna be adding the fillets at the very end, okay? So look to this drawing for the reference of the dimensions that we're going to be using. So I'm gonna minimize this and this, and I already have my working directory selected and I'm gonna start a new part. And I'm gonna call this bearing holder, and I'm gonna call it three, there we go. Okay, so I've got a fresh drawing here and I'm gonna start by extruding that, that diameter of two and a half inch boss and I'm gonna be putting that as the origin. So my placement here is gonna be on the top plane and I'm gonna do my sketch view so I can see it and I'm gonna zoom, zoom, zoom in here and I'm going to draw a circle, click to the origin and my diameter is going to be 2.5 on the outside. There we go. And I'm going to check. I should be able to. Yep. And I should be okay. And my distance here is going to be 1.31. Okay. Enter. And okay. All right. That looks good. Now I'm not going to put the through hole in here yet. I'm actually going to put the base ears in first. And then I'm going to put the through hole in. If I don't do it in that order, what's going to happen is it's going to backfill with the base. And so um, it, it, it'll make sense if you make that mistake because I did it before. And, um, and so uh, I just want to let you know, you don't want to do the through hole just yet until we get the ears in place. So we're going to do the ears next. So we're going to go back to extrude. Our placement is going to be back on our up plane so i'm going to do my my view here then what we're going to do is we're going to put our ears on either side so i'm going to have a circle i'm going to start on the right hand side over here and the diameter of the outside here 0.69 you have to multiply that by two to get the diameter 1.38 okay and the distance from the center as given to us in our problem is 1.875. There we go. Okay. Now, since we have another ear that is symmetrical on the other side, what we're going to do is I'm going to select that circle and I'm going to mirror it. And when I mirror it, it just wants to know where my center line is. And I'm just going to pick the vertical center line here, the origin, and Little mouse button and I'm good to go. Okay, got it on the other side. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we need to project the outside circle here. So, because we're gonna need it to make our lines tangent on either side. <clears throat> so I'm gonna project this and this. So both sides of it. And I'm gonna move this to the outside there. I'm gonna do my line and I'm just gonna click on either side here. Now the second one it assumes to be tangent but it didn't the first one. So I'm gonna to go to the tangent constraint and I'm gonna select my line and then my circle and then it makes it tangent. Then what I'm gonna do is instead of doing the same thing on the other side, I'm simply gonna mirror that this uh, line. So I'm gonna select this line, I'm gonna hit the mirror and I'm gonna select the vertical center line there and I'm good to go look at that now I'm going to mirror it one more time over the horizontal but I'm going to select both of these lines so I'm going to click one I'm going to hit I'm going to hold my control key 
and I'm going to click the other so I can I can activate them both. If you don't hold the control key, it's just going to go from one to the other and it's not going to select two at once. I'm going to hit mirror and I'm going to select my horizontal center line and now I have those lines mirrored on the other side. Now what I need to do is get rid of the portions that I don't need. So it's going to be these radiuses on the inside on all of the circles. So I just want the outsides for the profile. <coughs> oh, here, and I'm going to kind of go back and forth here to get all these in there. There we go. That's on one side. And then I'm going to delete segment on this side to get all of these there we go okay now i'm going to check to see if i'm ready by doing feature requirements i've got two green check marks and i can hit okay and now it's assuming that i <laughs> that my extrude distance is 3.82 but i actually want it to be 0.56 let's see that's 5.6 there we go okay that looks good now I'm going to do that center hole extrude all the way through. So I'm going to zoom in, extrude in the front face, circle. I'm going to get my sketch view. And I'm going to do 1.625. Yes. Now, because it's on the origin here, it's locked to that center. So I'll be good to go because it's not looking for dimensions. It's actually tying it to the center there. So I'm going to hit OK. And then what I'm going to do is I want to change the direction, remove material, but I want to set my depth not to an actual value, but to through all. So that if I change anything about the depth of, of this, the thickness, it will always be a through hole. Okay. If I leave it at a depth and it goes deeper, then it's going to be bottomed out or it's going to be bored to a depth, and, and I don't want that. All right, so I have my basic form here. So there's a couple more features I've got to put in place. Um, why don't we put the holes in either side here, okay? So let's do an extrude on this face, sketch plane. And I'm going to put my circle in place. Now, this is one of those where I need to activate the radius. Okay, so I'm just hovering over, activate that radius so that I can grab that center. If I don't activate that radius, it's going to be looking for X's and Y's. And I do want it to share the same center as that radius. I'm going to click this in place. This diameter is going to be 0.56. And should be good to go. Okay. And again, I need it to change the direction, go through, and I want it to be through all. Now, I am not going to draw it on the other side, okay? What I am going to do is I am going to select that extrude that I just did, see, select that extrude, and I'm going to mirror it, okay? And so you'll notice here that a mirror is active when I select it. So I'm going to mirror it. And it knows that I want that one. And all I need to do is select the right plane here, and it's going to mirror it over that right plane. Right? So look at that. Isn't that cool? So now I didn't have to go in and do another one. So whenever you can see these axes of symmetry, you want to um, you want to use those because it makes you a little bit more efficient. So I've been kind of highlighting the mirror on. Um, this part because it is a symmetrical part over a couple of axes. Okay. All right. So then feature wise, the last feature that I have, I'll go back to our sketch here. We have our through hole in, we've got our holes in the base, we've got our ears in place. We just need to put this hole in, which is a quarter inch diameter through just this wall right here. So how we're going to set that one up and minimize this is we're actually going to look at this. So we're going to put it through the top portion right here, but we're going to draw it on the front plane. So the front plane is right here. So I'm going to extrude. The placement of this is going to be on the front plane this time. 
and I want to do my sketch plane so I can see it. All right. So I'm going to put my circle here, right there. And it's going to be a quarter inch, 0.25. And the dimension is actually going to come from the front face here to that center. And this dimension is given at 0.42. Okay, it's so right there. All right, now I'm going to I'm going to rotate with my middle mouse button and you'll notice that my circle is actually on the plane in the inside here, okay? So, should be good on my placement, okay? And I am, and I'm gonna hit okay. Now, for right now, you'll notice that it wants to extrude down. I don't want it to go in that direction. I'm gonna actually remove material, and it is going to flip up so that it goes through the top wall here. And I want it to go not to a depth, but through all surfaces. And now when I rotate this, there it is. It's not in the bottom, it's only in that top wall. There it is, okay. All right, there we go. Now the last thing I need to do is I need to add the chamfer, which is the design change to this, to the front side and the back side of the through hole. So I'm gonna hit chamfer. The size of the chamfer is a 32nd of an inch. So it's going to be on this side, and then I'm going to rotate it around, and it's going to be on that side, and I'm going to hit OK. So chamfers are in. And then the last thing I need to do is add my rounds or my fillets. Those are an eighth of an inch, and those are going to go on the outside surface here, side surface there, and then at the base where it's aligned there and at the base here there we go okay and my bearing holder is done okay so now you want to position this so that you can kind of try to see all of the features <laughs> if you can there we go okay i think that's pretty good all right and i'm going to zoom in just a little bit and i'll do my windows shift s to get my snag here, make sure to include your model tree and all of your model. And now you're ready to paste it onto your document to upload to Blackboard for your assignment. Okay, hope this helped.